Welcome to Travel in Style. If you want to visit a place that has no cars or roadways and no rush hours spent on the motorway, then Venice is the place for you. A mesmerizing destination, Venice is the capital of northern Italy's Veneto region and is built on more than 100 small islands in a marshy lagoon in the Adriatic Sea. St. Mark's Basilica, or Square, as it's fondly known, is Venice's political and judicial hub and a place for locals and visitors to hang out. It's often referred to as being the beating heart of Venice. The Torre de Orologio, a clock tower built between 1496 and 1506, is one of this city's main attractions. But if you're looking to find out more about Venetian history, culture, and religion, then you won't be disappointed because there are museums, churches, and historical buildings in abundance here. The biggest problem you'll face is deciding what to see and where to go. There simply is too much for one visit. So is the city's shopping and Market Street trade selling a variety of goods and souvenirs, you'll be spoiled for choice. But what people really come here for is the water, the canals. No other bar in Europe has a richer history than Harry's Bar, frequented by some of the world's most famous people, including Ernest Hemingway, Orson Welles, Charlie Chaplin, and Alfred Hitchcock, Harry's Bar is steeped in legend. It was opened in 1931 by a bartender called Giuseppe Cipriani. According to history or legend, Harry Pickering was a young and rich Bostonian who frequented the Hotel Europa in Venice where Giuseppe was a bartender. When Pickering suddenly stopped coming to the hotel bar, Giuseppe asked him why. When he explained he was broke, Giuseppe lent him about $5,000. Two years later, Pickering returned to the hotel, ordered a drink, and gave Giuseppe four times what he borrowed, or so the legend goes. Harry's Bar was declared a national landmark in 2001 and is as famous for its history and legend as it is for its Bellini and Dry Martini cocktail. What most people want to do when visiting this region is to get out on the water, and there is an abundance of choice for you. From traditional canal boats to speed boats, you'll see the wonders of Venetian architecture and vast numbers of historical buildings, museums, and monuments, all the while gliding along the water. This is the chance of a lifetime, the reason why thousands of tourists flock to this part of Italy, to see Venice in all its glory from the water.
we've checked into the Hotel Bauer Palazzo, a striking boutique property overlooking the Grand Canal. With a Gothic facade and 18th century splendor, inside this hotel is often considered one of the leading hotels in the world. It's not just the interior of this property that is striking. The grounds with its private lush green gardens and secluded swimming pool makes this hotel one of the jewels in the crown of Venetian hospitality. The history is definitely there, and, uh, and some history goes way, way back. And since 1948, the borough has kind of grown uh, to being one of the most important leaders, iconic uh, uh, location-wise, and also, uh, for many other reasons, hotel in Venice. The palace, the palazzo, how can I say, typical of the 18th century uh, palazzos for the decor, for the style, and uh, for the furnishings, which has been uh, a little updated in order to keep what was uh, the more traditional stucco paintings and uh, floors and uh, everything that is the, the most historical furnishings that was uh, uh, like in the archives and the historical of Palazzo and yet adding some kind of uh, more contemporary touches here and there. Villa F is uh, Yes, it's Venice today. Uh, it's like a mix of many things, which start from way back, but then again are contemporary, or because it's mostly dictated by well-being, and uh, well-being is a mixture. If you look at this room, the palette of the colors, which is uh, spoken in 18th century style, is very similar to the Villa F palette which is actually spoken in year 2000. You know, you have the same color, the same softness, uh, but then the fabric of much more today style, you know, the linen towards the silk or to uh, the embroidery, which now we don't use that as much anymore. The garden of the Giudecca uh, are all very special, but the one of the Palladio and Villa F is one of the largest garden left. And, uh, and that is definitely a work of art. If you want to relax and unwind, then fear not. The Bowers Spa Complex is the first of its kind in Venice. No other hotel offers a spa of this scale anywhere else in the world. Set over two floors, it has eight rooms, each dedicated to a special treatment, from facials to the Vitalis Bath, which offers detoxifying baths using products such as Dead Sea Minerals and MUDs, as well as something a little bit different. It may look a little strange, but we can assure you this massage will certainly do the trick if you're looking to unwind and de-stress. There are three or four times where Venice become, you know, the 
a city, the location of the most the wide international uh, visitors and celebrities and VIPs and uh, artists or uh, stars. And this is, of course, the Biennale of the movie festival. The same goes for the Biennale of Contemporary Art. Then Carnival, the Redentore, which is a beautiful holiday we have in the middle of the summer. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden Venice just uh, become the city of everyone and uh, it's just like uh, an open party all the time. Venice has surpassed our expectations. It offers everything a traditional city has to offer without a single car or traffic jam in sight. One of the most visited and historical capitals in the world, London is a diverse melting pot of languages and cultures. Big Ben, the Houses of Parliament, Buckingham Palace, the River Thames, Trafalgar Square, and St. Paul's are just some of these city's most famous landmarks. With its history dating back to the Roman times, London offers visitors the chance to embrace the old with the new. And make no mistake about it, London offers pretty much everything. It's also a global city, with strengths in the arts, commerce, education, entertainment, fashion, and transport. It could be this reason why approximately 16 million international visitors flock to this city every year, making it Europe's most visited city. 27 million visitors stop by through London for a one-night break, made easy by London's international airport links, which is considered one of the best in the world. London's public transport system has been the benchmark for other countries. Riding the tube is a must-do for those whose time in the city might be short, or simply by those wanting to travel London the real way. London is one of those places where charm and creativity meets with history and royal heritage. It truly is a city of dreams, and one that is rarely explored just once. They say location is everything, and this is never more so true than in London, which is why we've decided to stay at the Grange Hotel in St. Paul's. A five-star hotel nestled right beside St. Paul's Cathedral in London's bustling business district, the Grange is a property where location is key. But fear not, that doesn't mean anything has been compromised. Quite the contrary. This hotel's service is second to none and adopts a policy where the customer's every whim is catered for. The Grange Hotel is a contemporary glass interior property boasting 433 guest bedrooms, all beautifully styled with contemporary and modern furnishings. It also houses an array of bars and restaurants, a health and fitness club and spa.
Grange St Paul's case, um, we demolished what was here. It was built originally as a citadel by um, Winston Churchill to protect the communications of London. Uh, so it took some demolition, bearing in mind it was built to withstand bunker busting bomb bombs. That, uh, um, so it took some time dismantling. Uh, and one of the fortunate things that we were able to do is uh, having close contact with our customers is to identify what they want. And so we, when we're able to build, um, we can build with what they want. And for leisure customers, swimming pools and spas, uh, lots of facilities, o o offerings in food and beverage, restaurants and bars, it's um, very useful to, to be able to construct those from new and to identify what clients need and then, and then to try to supply it. Combining state-of-the-art event facilities with a wealth of history and local tradition, this hotel offers an inspirational selection of meetings and event locations, including this area, an elegant and light-filled part of the hotel that has become popular with tourists and regulars. What we identified and, um, from our clients was that they liked things with light and air. Um, so it's very easy to, to fill such spaces as the atrium with just more rooms or conference space and, and so on. But um, that, I think, is a unique feature. We try to, even, even um, in two levels below ground where we have conference facilities, we've got natural daylight that spills into the area. Um, and yes, it's, it's, it's an interesting thought. Some people may uh, construct hotels in a different way. We simply try to identify what our, our customers want and try to deliver it. And, and light and air uh, are two things that we think are important to them and therefore to us. Well, London has some amazingly iconic features and St Paul's Cathedral is one of them. The opportunities for the access to the West End, to go to the city, to um, engage in all the life and activity and the vibrancy of London from such areas as St Paul's is uh, a unique thing. Uh, the, the most unique thing about our hotels, of course, is its location. You can stay in hotels anywhere, but uh, um, only one location. Well, when you're tired of London, you're tired of life, as the, um, as the saying goes. There are so many different things about London. Um, uh, the theatres and the, and the choice of restaurants and bars, the iconic landmarks, the activities. I was with a film director just last night um, who said that um, he's actually from Canada. Uh, and he said, I just, I, when you come here, I, you just don't want to leave. And I think that perhaps is, um, is appropriate for pretty much anywhere close to our hotels. You can, there's so many different things that you can see in London. Um, uh, whatever your choice, if it's cultural, if it's heritage, if it's sporting, if it's activity, if it's daylight, nightlife, there's plenty to do. Well, you don't need to tell us twice. We're off. You can choose London's public transport system to get around, and the Grange Hotel is in close proximity to the Tube Network. Or you can go by private chauffeur. Well, why not? Visitors often discover that there are simply not enough days to take in the city's vast offerings. But one of the most iconic things to do when in London is sample a traditional afternoon tea. And where better to go than the famous Dorchester Hotel? Serving traditional English afternoon tea since 1931, the Dorchester offers a charming selection of teas, finger sandwiches, cakes, pastries, and scones in an opulent setting with an elegant and quintessentially English welcoming service. Tea has been running in prom a promenade for the past 80 years, so that's special it is. We are one of the most iconic and traditional hotels you can have in, uh, in UK, and we tra traditionally serve this afternoon tea since the first day we open. You get a mixed crowd, people coming from the international. Usually we're subject a lot to people living a dream, coming to the Dorchester for afternoon tea, so that would be the highlight of their stay in London, the highlight of their day. I think you want to look at the surrounding, the welcoming, the warmth, the fact you're feeling very personalized and, and very, very special. You won't be you won't be actually one of the guests, part of the, part of the group. You're always going to be treated as a, the only guest existing in the world on that particular moment. And that's going to make the afternoon tea very special. The way we interact with the guests, we are silver serving the sandwiches. We're offering to spread the cream and the jam for the guests as well. And plus uh, offering additional uh, part of the service, actually adding a lot of, a lot of uh, positive notes to the experience. There really is so much to see and do. So, what are you waiting for? There's an array of theaters showing classic and contemporary theater performances, as well as popular musicals that, in the past, have included The Lion King, 
Greece, Wicked, and Les Miserables, to name a few, of course. The hardest decision you'll make is choosing what one to see and whether to opt for an afternoon viewing or nighttime showing. The choice, of course, is yours, but it should be at the top of your bucket list of things to do when in this beautifully historical and vibrant city. London is definitely a city that is alive just as much at night as it is during the day, and with a spectacular skyline, and with its famous monuments lit up in glory, you'll fall in love with this city all over again. So, till next time, remember to travel in style.